Welcome to the 22nd lecture in general topology. The topics that we will explore in this lecture include a continuation of our study of homeomorphisms and topological invariants, and we'll look at some exotic topologies on the reals. Okay, as usual, we'll begin this lecture with the exercises from the previous lecture, and the first exercise we will prove as a theorem a regular space is Hausdorff if and only if it is T0 or Komolgorov so proof let X be a regular space Suppose that the space X is Hausdorff. Then the space X is T0 or Kolmogorov. Hence the Hausdorff condition implies the Frechet condition which in turn implies the Komogorov condition. So conversely, suppose that the space X is T0 or Komogorov, and let the points X and Y be two points in the space X such that X is not equal to Y. Then there exist open neighborhoods U of X and V of Y such that either the point X is not in the set V, or the point Y is not in the set U. Now if the point X is not in the set V, then X is in the complement of V, where the complement of V is a closed set which does not contain the point Y so since the space X is regular There exist open neighborhoods S of the closed set, the complement of V, and T of the point Y, not in the closed set, the complement of V, such that the intersection of these neighborhoods is empty. Now since the open set S is an open neighborhood, of the point X the space X is Hausdorff. Now if the point Y is not in the set U, then the point Y is in the complement of the set U, where this complement is a closed set. 
which does not contain the point x. So once again, since the space x is regular, there exist open neighborhoods. S of the point x and T of the closed set, which is the complement of U, which does not contain the point X, such that the intersection of these neighborhoods is empty. And since the set T is an open neighborhood, of the point Y, the space X is Hausdorff, and hence, in either case, the space X is Hausdorff. Okay, so the second exercise we will also prove as a theorem a normal space is Hausdorff if and only if it is T1 or Frechet. So proof, let x be a normal space and suppose that the space x is Hausdorff then the space X is T1 or Frechet since the Hausdorff condition implies the Frechet condition So conversely, suppose that the space X is T1 or Frechet, and let X and Y be two points of the space X, where X is not equal to Y then since the space is T1 or Frechet, every singleton is closed and so the singleton containing the point X and the singleton containing the point Y are disjoint closed sets so since the space X is normal there exist open neighborhoods U of the singleton containing X and V of the singleton containing Y such that the intersection of U and V is empty. Now since U is an open neighborhood
of the point x and v is an open neighborhood of the point y whose intersection is empty the SpaceX is Hausdorff. So now the third exercise. Consider the open interval from negative 1 to 1 of the real line as a subspace. of the real line and let the function f from the real line into this subspace be defined by f of x is the hyperbolic tangent of x. So let's look at the graph of the hyperbolic tangent notice that the lines y equals negative 1 and y equals 1 are horizontal asymptotes and the line y equals a where a is in the open interval from negative 1 to 1 intersects the graph exactly once. Also notice that the function is monotone increasing. So applying the horizontal line test we see that every horizontal line y equals a where a is in the open interval from negative 1 to 1 intersects the graph of the function f exactly once That is, for every point y in the open interval from 1, negative 1 to 1, there exists exactly one point x in the set of reals such that y is equal to f of x and where f of a is equal to f of b if and only if a is equal to b. And hence the function f is bijective. Further, the function f is monotone increasing. That is, for every pair of points x and y, in the real line where x is less than y, f of x is less than f of y. So let the open interval from a to b be a basis element. And the standard basis for the real line, then the direct image of this open interval is an open interval of the form from C to D where C is greater than negative 1 
less than D, which in turn is less than 1. That is the direct image of every basis element in the standard basis for the real line is open in the subspace now since every open set U of the real line is a union of some basis elements the direct image of U is a union of open sets in the subspace and is therefore open in the subspace. And hence the inverse of F, which is a map from the subspace negative 1 to 1 into the real line defined by F inverse of X is the inverse hyperbolic tangent of X is continuous. Now let's look at the graph of the inverse hyperbolic tangent function. Notice that the vertical lines x equals negative 1 and x equals 1 are vertical asymptotes. And also notice that the inverse function is also monotone increasing. Now as the inverse of f is monotone increasing, We have that for every pair of points x and y in the open interval from negative 1 to 1, where x is less than y, f inverse of x is less than f inverse of y. Now a basis for the subspace topology on the open interval from negative 1 to 1 is the collection script B, which is the intersection of the open interval from negative 1 to 1 with an open interval from A to B, where the open interval from A to B is an open interval in the real line. Further, we can restrict the values of A and B so that A is greater than negative 1, less than B, which in turn is less than 1. And so the inverse image of the intersection of the open interval from negative 1 to 1 with the 
open interval from A to B is the intersection of the inverse image of the open interval from negative 1 to 1 with the inverse image of the open interval from A to B, which is the open interval with endpoints, the inverse of negative 1 and the inverse of 1 intersected with the open interval with endpoints, the inverse of A and the inverse of B, that is every element B, for every element B in the collection script B, the inverse image of that element B is an intersection of open intervals in the real line and is therefore open in the real line. Now since every open set V of the subspace is a union of some basis elements in the collection script B. The inverse image of the set V is a union of open sets. in the real line and is therefore open in the real line. And hence the, the function f is continuous and thus the function f is a homeomorphism And therefore, the real line is homeomorphic to the subspace, the open interval from negative 1 to 1 with the subspace topology.